here in episode one, like the first one, our first effort at the youth leader's brain kind of reimagined. Um, the youth leader's brain, oh man, this goes way back, uh, man, almost when you were born. Uh, <laughs> probably before. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, we, uh, Scott and I, uh, we were in a van. Uh, I was speaking at one of your retreats or something like that. And there were three or four of us uh, together and uh, we started talking about uh, what we could do to try to help youth leaders. We'd been doing it for a few years and uh, then wanted to be able to share what we had learned. And so the youth leader's brain uh, has, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of pages of stuff. And uh, it's kind of old, it's been around for a while. And uh, we're trying to uh, do some things here that just make it um, make it kind of different, maybe a little bit more accessible uh, to you. So first of all, uh, my name is Sam Brock. We've got uh, Scott Olson. Uh, here with us. Uh, tell us a little bit of what you do, Scott. Well, now I work with um, International Baptist College and Seminary, and I'm recruiting and mentoring, and I just get to work with uh, college students. Yeah. So this week, he's here with us at our horsemanship camp, also uh, preaching at our operations service. And then uh, Craig Lawson, tell us a little bit of what you do. I am uh, the summer camps director, uh, so I plan everything during the summer. And then uh, for church, I'm a youth leader at Life Point Baptist Church in Apple Valley. I've been doing that for about three years. And then before that, I was working with children uh, in the children's program. And then back in Wisconsin, I even did some youth leading there. So I'm the director here at Ironwood and have worked uh, with youth as a youth leader uh, for 12 years. How many years did you put in? 15 years Six. as a youth leader. Yep. And then, what, 14 years here? Yep. Or so? uh, um, Scott and I probably up, up upwards now of uh, 30 plus years in youth work of some kind. And, uh, and so uh, some of our ideas are older uh, <laughs> um, and then some of the ideas are younger. And, and uh, so here's what we're doing. We're trying to do the top uh, 10 games uh, for a small youth group. You guys have any uh, words before we get started, before we share our, our number 10 uh, with how you tried to figure this out? Yeah, well, I'd first say that I was surprised on this, so I figured it out quickly. <laughs> and uh, But these are the things that, as you just think a little while, these are the things that you did a number of times. You pulled them out over and over again. So um, because it worked, because it worked in many places, um, and for me, it's youth work, camp work, and now college work, working with singles, and, and then with adults at times. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, just went off of what I've been doing with uh, my current youth group. So uh, their personality, uh, just trying to find <laughs> games that fit them. Not every youth group is the same. So uh, the youth group I had in Wisconsin to this one is quite a bit different. But I kind of just tried to focus on the last three years of uh, what do we do, uh, what works, what what does my what do my teens enjoy? There are some games that I enjoy that my teens uh, loathe. Uh, <laughs> it's so your we, top ten, but not theirs. Yeah, so they, they didn't make the list because uh, we haven't done it with them, uh, or it just didn't really uh, go off well with them. So I kind of just put it in the uh, the aspect of the ministry I'm serving right now. And what kind of works with them? Yeah. For me, this was tough because I went through a couple years where I had like 14 guys and two girls, you, you know, so everything was active and all that. And then all of a sudden it flip-flopped, you know, to 16 girls and one guy. And you're like, ah, oh, those games don't work anymore. And suddenly we're playing around a table a little more. And then uh, for me, sometimes it's a game it's not always about the competition and the score either for me. It was just, is that, is that was this fun to do together? Did we enjoy doing it? And so I, that kind of raised up, like for intensity of competition, I might have a different list. This was a little bit more about just, uh, we just had fun uh, doing this. So some of mine go way back to year, like year one and two. And then I really struggled with one that I've only played a few times, but it's like a new favorite. And, you know, I'm like, oh, I want to put this one in, but I'm not sure if it's like, that big, you know, to make this list, but I, I switched it at the last minute. I'm like, nope, I'm putting it in. So uh, <laughs> we haven't seen each other's list. I'm kind of curious to see if we've got any that uh, double up. And uh, and so here I we go. I think we have two. You think uh, you, you're, you're, you're guessing two? Two? Uh, two. You and I will double up on two. Okay, I'm guessing at least three or four. Okay. Uh, I don't. You think your list is pretty unique? 
No. No. Uh, okay. I, I think we, we we've all worked together for a while. Uh, so our, we've we, all shared a lot we've of all ideas. Shared quite a bit. I think we I think we'll share a number, a yeah. decent number. Okay. A number. Yeah, just, <laughs> He's just yeah. gonna leave it. At, at that. I'll, I'll be right. Because <laughs> any number can be decent, right? <laughs> okay. So here we go. I'm gonna start off uh, with uh, with number ten, and uh, number ten is a um, uh, for me. Uh, this is a game uh, that I I played one time. It didn't play well the first time. Like the first time was clunky. We weren't very good at it. Uh, but when we brought it back, man, the teens uh, just really got into it. Uh, it's a fun one for us. It's the game Concept. Uh, have you guys played that one, uh, the concept? I so I like this game because it can gear up. Um, there's four different teams, and they are basically setting uh, things on different pictures, different icons. And so when you set those on there, uh, your team is trying to guess uh, what it is, what the phrase is, or whatever. So uh, we play a little bit different than the rules are. We let the person say, okay, this is the, um, we let the original team guess for about 30 seconds, and then everybody can guess for the 60 seconds after that. So it's like a 90 second round, and if nobody gets any points, then it just didn't uh, didn't work. But uh, uh, you split the, the one team up, uh, so part of them are guessing, part of them are setting out the little uh, things on what the icons would be. So, you know, there's like black and white, there's rain and, and sun, there's, uh, uh, there's, so there's colors, all kinds of stuff, big old board uh, that you've got to mark up. Uh, so uh, for us, this can scale up to 16 really easy because you just put four players on, on each team. And, uh, and it can actually get quite a bit bigger, uh, but it is really fun with a group of 8 to eight to 15 or is, a, is a fun setup. So it's a board game that goes big. Yeah, it can it it um, expands and contracts really nice. Like I like that uh, that flavor uh, to it. It's probably what wasn't fun at the beginning was that we were we didn't know the icons very well. You, you know what I mean? Like we were just learning what was there. But once you got better at that, and then it was kind of even when you failed, it was like oh, we should have. I was trying to say this, and so it's like no drawing. You didn't know Pictionary. You know, you're just <laughs> pointing at stuff that they should get. Triple tap. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, you have like a big square that says that's the main. <laughs> point, you know. There's like in that game, there's like 40 to 60 different comparisons. It's either yeah. this or this. So you have a lot to a lot to work with. Yeah. And even when you get it wrong, or the, the people will be like, oh, you should have used that one. And and then you're like, ah, oh, I should have done that. So uh <laughs> it was it was cool. Okay, Scott, what do you got? What's your number 10? Mine would have to go with uh, mafia or resistance. So social um social deduction game. Really, this one happened. I came here. You were talking about Mafia. You're like, you got to try this game. And you told me about it. And I'm like, doesn't make any sense. Doesn't sound fun at all. You know, <laughs> Some of these games don't fun, sound fun in the beginning. I like Resistance because it gives a little bit more structure. But with Mafia, the beauty was we began to make our own storylines. And yeah. as we did it with the youth group, we would, you know, I would find that this would begin to happen in a park and, and on a bus and, and you could do it anywhere. And it really is um, the, the, that concept of this is the group and you're trying to figure out the other team. And so Mafia for us worked over and over again. And now there's just different ways to do the same thing. Yeah, Mafia, I, I, I mean, I like Mafia. The fun part for me is the storyline. So if yeah. you can get the storyline going, it's uh, really fun. Do you play Mafia? Like you do? Oh, uh, we love Mafia. Uh, so I play it a different way. Uh, so the bigger your group gets, the um, the quicker you'll need to progress your game. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, with 25, if you're going above 15, uh, you're eliminating more people, uh, getting them out of the game uh, per round so that your rounds go faster so that you can restart. So probably the biggest bummer in Mafia is I was almost always the first one um, to go. To go. <laughs> townspeople didn't care about me even if I was a townsperson. Uh, and so then it became like, it's like an hour, an hour and a half of just sitting there watching people play. And it got real boring. Uh, and so I don't like that aspect of the game. But I think depending on how you construct the rules for your youth group, you can really make it 20, 25 minute games. And you have a 20, 25 minute story that everybody's kind of in tuned on. And uh, even the people that are out are able to help with uh, making story. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Craig, you're number 10. Um, I don't know if you guys, have you guys played Spud? 
I don't think I have. Oh, I think every youth group should have a dodgeball-like game that isn't dodgeball. And so uh, do <laughs> dodgeball uh, for me, for Spud, is uh, you have somebody that was uh, that was at the start of the game, it's just they're just chosen, and they have the ball, and what they do is they call someone's name, and they throw that ball as high up in the air, as far up, up as far away as possible from that person, or they can pretty much just hand it to them. Uh, and then that person, once that person yell, has that ball, they yell spud, and everybody has to stop. Uh, and uh, their goal is to hit to hit a person, and then they would then become uh, the person that has to choose and throw. You have three lives, uh, in essence, so if you get hit three times, you're, you're out. And so it become, I've never played a game of spud where we actually eliminated everybody. It just becomes a game where uh, you want to hit so-and-so, or I want to see if I can throw it this playground ball 40 yards to hit somebody. The thrill of skill for some people has some uh, really fun uh, stab you in the back moments that youth groups all like. Uh, <laughs> that that's what makes memories. So Spud, a fun twist on dodgeball. I know a lot of groups play dodgeball, uh, but uh, Spud is my go-to for for a dodgeball type game. Okay, number nine uh, for me is uh, is a game that uh, that would be played around a table, uh, really easy. I'm not sure if anybody else will have it on their list, but it's Saboteur and uh, Saboteur. Uh, you can get this one on Amazon. Um, but I, what I like about this game is it plays uh, three to nine really nicely. So it's one of the few games that goes down to three, four, five, uh, really good. Still plays out to nine. Um, so the basic content, uh, concept of Saboteur is that there are three different places that could have treasure. And uh, you're a group of uh, little gnomes or something like that trying to uh, dig a tunnel uh, to uh, one of those three spots. So um, there's a hidden identity um, if you're playing like like with five or six of you, a uh, couple of you are the kind of the saboteur and you don't know who it is, that person's probably playing with you for a while and then eventually <laughs> it becomes obvious they're the saboteur. Um, but, um, and so it's fairly quick. Um, it has that mafia resistance kind of flavor where you don't, you, like a, there's a hidden role, um, but it's pretty quick. You're trying to build this thing. Like Kind of a little story is being told as you make your way uh, to it. Um, it's supposed to play over three rounds, like the real game pl plays over three <laughs> rounds. We just play one round, depending on time, uh, maybe two uh, at the most. But the reason I like it is because of the small, small group um, uh, where it's a fun game uh, way down in the low numbers. So it was my put it in the backpack. If all of a sudden my group of eight became a group of three, <laughs> this was the one I pulled out because it was really easy. Oh, I was going to play that game that needed a few more people, but now Saboteur works. I like Saboteur a lot. I like the fact that you thought they're up. They're on your team and they're like, oh, this is the only card I have. Yeah. I'm sorry I'm breaking yeah. this tunnel. You're like, sure. <laughs> right. yeah. but at the same time, my struggle with Saboteur is the fact that the cards can get messed up easy, yeah, yeah. you know, and so I, I think when you propped it out. Yeah, I did. I, I, made a, I made a little board, like a little piece of plywood that basically has, because they set the cards where they just have, and you have to go seven high, but one little miss, you know, and then all of a sudden you're, your whole tunnel is all messed up, you know? So uh, we did make a little thing where it made it all easy because we, we ended up playing that one quite a bit. So. <laughs> okay, Scott, what do you got for number nine? Really, this is a new one to me. Um, I'm collecting as I go. And um, uh, around here at Ironwood, everybody's playing signs. And, um, and they're like, Mr. Scott, you gotta jump in. And so it's new one, but it's something I know I'll use and it's, it's really that simple. You, you come in, you form a circle. So somebody in the middle, you choose a sign you can make with the hands, probably one that you can pass pretty easy. Um, mine was a peace sign. It was really easy. It was, <laughs> and, um, and so when you pass the sign, somebody else receives it and they confirm that they have it. And then they're looking to pass another sign. And so the guy's looking for the guy who has the sign at the time. And so getting in the middle, they get really good. They get kind of noisy. They're kind of faking you out. And, um, and I thought it was just a great quick game that just spontaneously happens. And I, I find those things are neat to just let the spontaneity happen. So how does that uh, one, youth group. how does that work? How does it start? Does the person in the middle closes their eyes. Okay. Yep. And then um, it's kind of like hot potato, but with, with a sign. With a sign. Yeah. And so, uh, so a I'd sign like is... Keep away your... Yeah. So a sign really is, is sent... And a sign has to be accepted. So I might send Mr. Scott his sign. 
I still have that sign until Mr. Scott accepts it. And then now he has the potato when he accepts it. And then he's trying to t send it to somebody else. So when he sends it to somebody else, is he sending his peace sign or is he sending he's their sending sign? He's sending someone else's yeah, sign. Yeah, so uh, maybe the pianist. Is, yeah. <laughs> so I have to do the pianist and, and I get caught doing the pianist. You know? Okay, so everybody has their own Everybody sign. has their own sign. Beard was one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Young okay. lady with the beard. <laughs> <laughs> I like awkward things. So like duck lips. <laughs> um, people don't think duck lips is duck lips when you're doing it as a sign because it's just. <laughs> and See, so, I've, any, I've never played this. <laughs> <laughs> anything awkward, I will do. And then also standing up is a fun uh, is a fun little stand up, turn around, sit down. One of the greatest memories I have is playing a game with people that did. So big hard ones like hard, hard, yeah, uh, like, hard to hide. It's a thrill of skill. If, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it ends up being a game where if you pull it off. Um, it, it's kind of just laugh at the person in the middle. How did you? How did, how you, did miss you miss it? this? Right, right. Um, so oh, that's a good one. I like it. Okay, what do you got, Craig? Uh, my number nine is uh, mafia style games. Uh, so I enjoy oh, mafia. This is style. our first. Yeah, first yeah. one. First one. I, I enjoy mafia style games. I enjoy storytelling, and I also enjoy uh, the memories that are made by um, uh, really being a traitor in the group. Uh, I, you had my trust. <laughs> uh, so Mr. Scott has resistance down. That's a board game. I think you can get for about fifteen dollars. Uh, and then there's a, another re-theme of it, of it called Avalon. Uh, and then there's just a number of games. So uh, One Night Ultimate Werewolf, uh, we've rethemed at camp to be Pinker Pinkerton Tryouts. Uh, but that also is a fun game. Everybody has uh, hidden roles and they have special abilities. Uh, so it's just fun to be able to uh, kind of represent yourself as some, something that you're really not to see if you can get away with it. Uh, and then most, most of those games are less than 10 minutes. Uh, except for like traditional mafia that can go hours depending on your <laughs> rule set. Uh, but most of them are about uh, 10 to 20 minutes and then you just reset and go over again. And the fun part about resetting and going over again is uh, if you if you did stab them in the back or if you did you know betray their trust in the game, the next game, that stuff carries over. As much as it shouldn't, it carries over. <laughs> and now uh, there's people here that they won't trust me when they play Resistance uh, because I've because I've, you played so well. Yeah, I yeah, <laughs> and they just no, just never trust him. He, he'll say everything logical. You just can't trust him, and that to me is the fun part of the game. So now I have to get them to. It's almost a bigger hill to climb, and so every time I continue to betray their trust in the game, becomes more and more uh, enjoyable for me. Not necessarily for them, uh, but but for me. So it's a fun memory game um, that uh, has storytelling aspects. So anywhere I go recruiting, I'll bring one of those games, and uh, typically it ends in yelling and good yelling. Uh, I can't believe you did this uh, type of a type of a moment. So I would add coup to that. Coup, yeah, coup, coup is a you know bluffing on. style change of role. Yeah, yeah. This brings up an interesting thing in games. A little side note right here. One of the reasons I like games is because it helps you get to know somebody. It helps you uh, uh, kind of develop that relationship with them. And so some of these games, like he's talking about betraying his trust, which is not a good, you know, not <laughs> not good, good, at all. good thing uh, that would happen. In the game, uh, in the moment of that game where you're playing uh, that, it's part of, um, it's, it's, like, it's like when you have an opponent in a game of basketball. Well, it's not like that person's the enemy, but, but they are, you're, you're against them. Uh, mm -hmm. But you're not really against them. Um, so games have that thing where it just kind of brings out who a person is. And that's why I like it. Because I, I spend all week without not being with the young people. And then we get together. And if I just keep on talking the whole time we're together, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get to know them. This yeah. is actually what brings out who they are. And lets them get to know me, too, when I, when I play with them. So one of the reasons I like the games. Side note right there. Number seven. <laughs> uh, uh, here. Uh, for me, uh, this is a new, brand new game for me, Trophies. Um, and this is the one that I was like, ah, I don't know if I'm going to put this one in. But it's so simple. It's so easy. Um, so all it is is a, a set of cards with a letter on one side. Uh, the letter, the audience can see the letter. On the back side of that card are four or five different um, categories. And I just say one of the categories and they have to just blurt the letter uh, uh, blurt a word out that starts with that letter of what they get. If they win, then they get that item. Again, this is one you can get on Amazon um, and uh, kind of a, 
not very expensive game, 15 bucks or something like that. I like it because it's so easy to play. Like the moment that I, I, I bring it up, they'll all know what's going on. I think it has replayability because um, because you're blurting out uh, words and, and stuff like that. I've, I only became familiar with it beginning of summer, uh, but it has been a pullout like, oh, I've got... 15 people or I've got 12 people or uh, I'm going to pull this game uh, this game out. So you count your score by how many uh, trophies you got or how many cards uh, you got. We did a few different things on scoring too that was fun, uh, but real simple game. Kind of liked it. Oh, I saw you guys play that and it was instantaneously added to a wish list on <laughs> Amazon. So. Yeah. Unique trophies too, the hot dog eating trophy that we yeah. could get. Yeah, on, get. on each yeah. one of the cards, it has like a unique trophy that was from some some time, you know. So, uh, yeah, so when I showed you the game, it was like hot dog eating contest 1983 or something like that. And, and you, I read that to the to the teens and they're like, Ooh, I want that one. I want that trophy. It has nothing to do with the game, uh, but they, uh, they like it. It's got this little dinky trophy that you're supposed to, you know, take a picture when you won. Uh, over over you so um this was the this was it's because it's brand new and that's an interesting thing about the top 10 list i didn't i went way back in my history like first year but then this is last two months so <laughs> yeah okay scott what do you got for me um storytelling is is something that's a lot of fun um and telestrations um uh they have you can buy it as a box you can get the fam the big pack and and I have used it that way, but we've also just stapled, stapled paper together, mm -hmm. and and it really is um, um, draw a picture, interpret the picture, and then pass it on. It's just it really is the um, Pictionary meets storytelling meets telephone, and it's a lot of fun. And and again, you begin to really see the personality of your group, and some of the quiet ones come out on this one, and they get really funny. And so Telestrations is a winner for me. I've only done the scoring of that game like once. Oh, who cares about scoring? Yeah, it's one of those games. It has a whole scoring system like, oh, this is my book, and I choose that person to get a point for best drawing and that person for best guess. And really what it comes down to is like, you guys ruined it. But that was really funny. Or, oh, I finally got one. I drew a basketball, and I got a basketball in the end uh, type of thing. So it, I like this one, too, because it... Like the seventh grader and the twelfth grader, like like you almost want the person who's not gonna do it as well yeah. mm -hmm. in the mix because that's part of what makes it uh, makes it fun. So nobody's trying to sabotage it, but um, one of your seventh graders usually that stick figure just really didn't look like that. <laughs> it's not helping me out at all. So I did a uh, survey with uh, with our teens when we worked together, and Telestrations made their like top three games of the year, and so they really liked uh, the game as well, so, okay. Uh, I kind of, I cheated. Did you cheat? I yeah, you keep lumping. Yeah. <laughs> lumping. I don't know, dice throwing stuff? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Come on. Big whole category. <laughs> I want that's the top ridiculous. 10 category of <laughs> games. <laughs> Uh, just providing a resource for you is all I'm doing. He's cheating. <laughs> uh, totally cheating. Uh, so dice throwing. Um, Tenzi is probably what my youth group does uh, oh, good one. for it. Uh, just because Tenzi is uh, very little stress. Fuse has like a timeline to it. It's still dice chucking to its yeah. uh, to the max, uh, but it has a timeline. Uh, uh, Cooperative. And you can even get like an app that plays intense music uh, yeah. during during it. And then Speed Cootie, uh, that's in our youth leader brain. Um, it's, again, dice chucking, but you're trying to get certain things first to be able to uh, score points. Who has the best uh, little cootie? It's a, an insect that was made up. So uh, those those three on dice throwing, I just I couldn't, I couldn't narrow it down. Well, no wonder you said we're going to overlap on a few. Yeah, yeah. Right. You pick a whole category. You, pick a you whole know, category. I said a number. It could be more than 10. <laughs> uh, Speed Cootie is probably one of my, uh, Tinsy would be huge, but Speed Cootie is fun yeah. only because in, it's like the little game of Cootie where you, you know, you draw, draw that and you get the body and then you get the tail and, and you add more. This just made it like uh, the moment somebody said Cootie, like bingo, then you move to another person. And that, that to me made that dice throwing a fun, fun thing. I have a dice throwing one, but it never didn't make your list. So, <laughs> Well, Speed Cootie for me is great too when you're, when you've got new people together and, and you just, you can play it for so many rounds 
And and the sheet, what sheet holds? Nine, 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 nine or eight, 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 eight yeah. because yeah. the center is the score. Yeah, and you can score it, and you got a top score, but you can stop at five. It's getting too long. And, and what they're doing is people that might not get together during the time, it's a beautiful mixer for me. Yeah. So I like it for a mixer. Okay, here we go. We're now on number seven. I think I said seven last time. Uh, my number seven classic uh, game from, uh, I mean, we've been playing it. I think there are a few variations. I'm curious if you guys have some variations to it, but the game of spoons. Mm. Uh, so. <laughs> Yeah, I or, have a variation. Or I table like. wrecking yeah. or... Wrestling. It really just comes <laughs> into wrestling. Right. So um, <clears throat> I went out and bought a whole bunch of big tablespoons and then a few serving spoons like at the thrift store. I bought this whole big set of, of everything. And then the way we've done it, um, I've done it lots of different ways, but the way I really like to see spoons happen is that you have a... Um, you kind of have a score for a certain type of spoon. Um, oh, okay. you know what I mean? So, so like if you take that one, that's like double points, uh, right there and that little baby spoon. So the baby spoon might be double points and the, the big spoon might be half points, but, but that way you're not getting somebody out. And then I, I wouldn't get people out until the very end, but at the very end, we, we would get people out like three at a time, not, not this little one. Oh, uh, you know, so you take three spoons. Right. Well, no, you would just narrow down the spoon count. Uh, to yeah. where you're going to knock out three people. Mm -hmm. And then I never got down to one. We would just get top three. You, you know, so like if there were nine of us, final round wouldn't take more than three times. You'd go nine to six and then to three. Those were your winners. And after that, we were playing points on, on the different types of spoons. So I think whatever you put in the center of the table that aren't spoons are more fun uh, than... Uh, that's part of the fun of the game, is that. Well, yeah, and they have... A lot of these games, like Mafia, I, I never saw a paper that said, this is how you do Mafia. And then all of a sudden, you got these games that tell you how to do it. <laughs> well, um, Nut So Fast is one of the games yeah. of spoons, and you can get walnuts and pistachios and almonds. And then it's got um, different actions that you have to do at times. Mm -hmm. And so they've really ramped it up. But yeah. I do love the fact that I can go to my drawer, grab some spoons, yeah. grab a deck of cards, and I'm going. Yep. Summer staff were at my house last week and they were asking for spoons and i was like what do you guys need spoons for we don't have anything to eat with spoons They're like oh we're gonna play the game spoons and i was like oh i didn't know people still played that game yeah. so i do like nuts so fast uh what mr scott had said um it has the it's like spot it and spoons yeah kind of combined uh so if you haven't played spot it uh your four-year-old can play Look, he uh, just added two more to my. No, uh, no resources, <laughs> res resources. We're very sharing. We're helping him out. Yeah, yeah. So it keeps going lumpy. Not, <laughs> not so fast as uh, in the spoons category. <laughs> <laughs> not so fast is a fun one. The only bummer with not so fast is I think it's five player. So that's the only. So you would need multiple sets yeah. if you wanted to be more than five. Yeah, it's um, a small. So group. I have played spoons with uh, two uh, card starts. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I have 10 people, I'll do number one person, number five person will uh, be the start of the card so that you don't have to wait so long, uh, you know, for all the way out to number 10. He's never, he's just looking at the center. So. Oh, that's good. I, you know, with spoons, it really is just survival. With not so fast, it's actually scoring. And mm -hmm. they have a really good way to score it. So I yeah. like that. Cool. Okay. Well, got? this is really old school. <laughs> old faithful. It's kind of a group juggling type thing. Um we would get a ball, maybe a volleyball or a beach ball, and we would just count how high we could get with the group. And, you know, these were the type of things that I would put in my bag when we were taking a trip. And and if we were waiting for somebody to come back for some reason, you know, you stop at Cayente and they have one bathroom and you're waiting <laughs> a long time, this comes out. And um, so Old Faithful is one of those things that's a cooperative effort again. You're counting and it just you just keep going. So I... I really liked that dynamic, and it, it plays small and big. I've never heard of that game. There you go. Great. I'm going to have to look it up. You got a new one. I got a new one. <laughs> okay, what do you got? Oh, I have, I, I hate to lump, so I won't. Uh, <laughs> I have Sculptionary. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, we have, I have a, a toolbox of a variety of different things, and uh, for about two years, Play-Doh was... It kind of had to be in there. Uh, and so when teens play with Play-Doh, it becomes amusing. And so then put a goal behind the Play-Doh. Um, and we don't even keep scores kind of like, all right, you have two minutes to sculpt the whatever you think a lion would be. And you'd have somebody that 
only makes a mane um, in those two minutes. And then you have somebody that makes something that looks more like an elephant than a lion. And it's kind of uh, just a fun... So is everybody sculpting? Oh yeah, everybody gets a Play-Doh thing. Everybody's sculpting. Uh, so you can play it different, but we just, like I want to see everybody's artistic ability or the lack thereof. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you just like to laugh at them. <laughs> oh, I, I get laughed at too, some of the things that I do. So it's uh, just to be able to have fun together, experience. You, we kind of like look back, oh, who's is the best? And we might, we might do points at some point, but really it, it just turns into everybody sculpting and having fun together. How did you figure out what they were sculpting? Did, did you just come up with stuff oh, just, on your own? Yeah, so uh, anything from um, like a Pictionary list, like Pictionary cards, and I would just grab one and say, oh, let's sculpt, you know, uh, the pyramids, like mm -hmm. three pyramids, and you'd get some interesting pyramids that look like squares. Um, and uh, just it's kind of just a Pictionary list that we would sculpt instead of um, draw. Yeah, very cool. Abraham Lincoln, one of my favorite sculpting ones. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> yeah, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Really good. Pancake! That's what I <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, this one, um, I don't see this one out there very much, but we uh, we played it uh, all uh, quite a bit. A uh, little game called Jinkums Up, Jinkums Down. And uh, let me explain what's going on here. It's basically a game of keep away. Um, this fits in the small group category because uh, if you have a, a table that half your group can get on one side, half the group on the other. Now it could be two eight foot tables, so you had eight people on, on both sides. But basically what happens is that you, uh, you start off with just a quarter and they're holding it under the table. And so the one team on one side is watching the other team. So uh, say our team had the quarter, we would just keep acting like we were handing this quarter back off. We might, we might not, but at some point, this side says Jinkums up and we all have to come up with our hands like this. Yeah. And so they're all looking at our hands and then they'll say Jinkums down. And when they say Jinkums down, we all have to go down. Now, if, if we are not all together, you'll hear that quarter clank somewhere. You'll know that it's on this <laughs> side, uh, you know, uh, right there. And so if that team, they, they can all debate and see it and then they're looking and there's usually somebody, you know, trying to bluff, you know, that they've got it, but they'll point at one hand. And then if that's where the quarter was, then that team gets it and they get to try to bluff us. And it just goes back and forth. Now, the reason I love Jinkums Up, Jinkums Down is once they get this basic idea of the quarter, then I add a half dollar. And then I add a silver dollar. So now they have three coins under here and they have eight hands. Or, you know, there's eight hands going up in the air. And so that, that team has a much more likely chance of catching one of them along the way. They can try to put everything in one hand if they want. But then as they get better at that and it's kind of going back and forth, then I do, I start adding things that are really hard so a jack is wonderful, you know, a, 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 a tag, yeah, so a hot wheel. I mean, they're, they're starting to get stuff that you're like, man, how do I keep that covered? Um, and so when they see whatever the new item is, they're like, oh, no, you got to be kidding. How are we going to hide that? And so then just success is, is an amazing thing. So the items that you're doing, it's just keep away. It's at the table. Um, but it's really a fun. The bluff that goes on over here, some of your kids get better at the whole drop, pick up, but it's already, you know, handing it, it off. It does drop. Yeah, it does drop. Uh, and it's a, uh, this is a fun game. I, I have, again, uh, sometimes I'll put a tablecloth down, then I'll rip the tablecloth off. Like, you know, oh, you're not, you don't get that easy uh, thing. So over the years, Jinkums up, Jinkums down. I don't see it anywhere else. Like, I, I don't even know if you could look it up and see that, but we've played it a long time. So. Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Just a junk drawer box. Uh, <laughs> That's, right. That's exactly right. Of all. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. Even a dollar bill. I mean, anything that just hard to, so. I forgot about that. I played that many times when we did mm -hmm. a youth group together and yeah, that's a winner, and I wrote it down because we're going to play it again. <laughs> it's good. Number six for me is uh, Just One, um, newer game that's come out in a box form. You've got these little trays that, that are you write with um, the yeah. uh, dry erase markers, and I just love the fact that everybody's trying to score together, and they're trying to give you a word that will lead that guesser to the word, but if they give the same word, you knock it out. So... When two or three of your people have the same word, now you're down to one or two words to guess, and it gets a little crazy. And um, it plays it plays seven or eight really easy, 
And people can come in if you're at five, you're just like, hey, join us. And yep. they're like, no. And you're like, no, no. It really helps if you join us, you know. <laughs> and uh, I just love how quickly it plays. Hour and a half, uh, and we just keep playing it. It yeah. just keeps going. This one is surprising to me. I, the box looks horrible. Like oh, the I hate box the box. That, yeah, so, Never played it because right, of the box. Yeah. yeah. But when you actually play it, the cooperative aspect of it, I really like it because it's not dependent on any one person. So some people don't like games because of the strategy and I've, I've got to pay attention to something that's going on. This one, um, like a player that's not really good, kind of, that's okay. Like, like that's all right. Um, so We would start to have some people go, I'm going simple. I'm doing the obvious one. <laughs> right. You know, but... Which rarely is. <laughs> it rarely is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you thought that was the obvious word? <laughs> this is a good one. Uh, this one, again, did I mention Amazon? It would be on Amazon. You yeah. could you could see reviews mm -hmm. on, on just one. And uh, I forgot about that. You had mentioned it uh, yesterday. And I'm like, ooh, I should have so put that on I my I think list. Walmart sells it now. Oh, do they really? I, I believe so. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's good. And you can make up your own, you know, you could make up your own little tile things too once you understood. So we actually did just one as uh, with a group of 24 and we did three groups of eight and they just competed against each other to see who got the most the high score. number. Yeah, the highest score. So that game can actually scale up, I think, to really big uh, just by just using tiles like, like this, you know. Um, okay, uh, what do you got? My number six is uh, Empire. Uh, fun one for us. Have you guys played Empire? I have a different uh, name for it. You do. You Old do. school name would be completely different. Okay, so Empire, Same game. Empire is, uh, everybody has a um, kind of an Empire name or a uh, business name, or really it, it comes down to whatever. I have my kids do two words, um, so Banana Fosters, or just two random words um, uh, that don't, don't necessarily make any sense. Uh, similar to like Four on the Couch, Four on a Couch when you, uh, when you make up names for Four on a Couch. So I just read off a lot of the names. I add a red herring, so they need to they need to remember the names. And uh, in essence, it's just a guessing game. Mr. Scott, are you? Um, I don't I don't know. William Shakespeare? And no, I'm not. And then he guesses. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to build the greatest empire empire by being correct on uh, on what on what people have said their name was. So it, most often it gets down to two groups, and they can't remember the name when like. <laughs> Six groups are left. I don't read the names off anymore. Uh, so it really is. It ends up being more of a memory game than, than really anything else. But um, my youth group uh, loves it. it. It's chill sitting around in a circle and just asking people, who are you? And uh, I like, we have, some, uh, we have some red herrings that are there every time. So one of our youth leaders, his name is almost always a red herring. But about every six times we play, one of the kids will choose it we'll as choose their it, name. Yeah. Um, and so it... it, it it ends up being like a history game. It kind yeah. of fits for us. I know it is Who Am I? And um, we say pick something at Home Depot or something at Ironwood. And it's such an effective game in such diverse groups that we took it to Trinidad. And, and it works even in Trinidad really well. <laughs> and But the idea of capturing my friends became a really big thing for yep, them. Yep. And it was just really nice to work with. And them. I've seen that one played with adults too. Mm -hmm. Like like that one has a, because the, their the, their creativity kind of makes the game. Um, so that makes it fun. Okay, uh, my number five uh, is a game that you would have to buy on eBay now. Uh, it's really old. There are a couple of games like it uh, that are kind of brand new, uh, but it's the game Personal Preferences. Um, so Personal Preferences goes like this. There's four pictures out there, uh, four titles of something, and then um, and then you play in pairs. So uh, I'm with one other person, and there's a four. There's a total of four teams. Um, so again, you could play eight, 12, you could have a team of three and two teams of two, it wouldn't matter. Um, but of those four items that are sitting out in the center, I put them in my personal preference order. So I put one, two, three, four, and then everybody else is also 
putting in order what they think. Now, I've hidden mine in an envelope as to one through four, but everybody else is um, putting where they think my number one is gonna be, where my number two, three, uh, and four is going to be. And they have an option in personal preferences to say, no, I know this one, I'm going you know, double point or lose a point if I, if I play. The reason I like personal preferences is not because of the game, but because of all the conversation uh, that, it, uh, that it creates. I, uh, we've made this one big uh, for camp, mm -hmm. uh, but personal preferences, just small game, eight to 10 people, just a hoot. Uh, great fun. What do you got, Scott? I, um, noodle games for me. I'm going outside, you know? <laughs> no, he's doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Is that I, a... I wasn't going to call it out for it. Uh... <laughs> so, pool noodles, all the different varieties of things that you can do. Uh, we played a game, Ninja, was a lot of fun where you blind a ninja, you put clothespins on him, guys are sneaking up, trying to pull the clothespins off while he's swinging a noodle and trying to knock you. Um, uh, jousting was a lot of fun. And then flipping burgers was another part. Of, flipping burgers? Yeah, flipping burgers. <laughs> Wow. Oh, I did that wrong. No, yeah, I was, was going to put my down, 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 down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, my out. favorite noodle right. game is still whack a knee. Um, whack a knee. So yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just fun. Uh, we've re we've renamed our whack a knee bludgeon of face because <laughs> um, it just doesn't hurt when you hit with a noodle. It just, it just doesn't hurt. <laughs> but it pops. It, it does. sounds always it good. It sounds yeah. worse. But I think the thing with noodle games that you have to be careful of, like when you're running an activity is don't give them a noodle until you've got the rules <laughs> already said. Because you just can't help but whack a person with yeah. a noodle. In Wackany, I took a noodle, I took a like a 12 inch piece of uh, a broom and stuck it inside the noodle and then duct taped it. So it's got a nice little hand, like you can really move that thing around. So, oh my. Yeah, just don't turn it the other way. We wouldn't play bludge in the face with that <laughs> with that noodle. Well, it's only for the handle and the rest of the noodle is all oh, okay, uh, going okay. out there. Yeah, so it's like a, it's like cool looking, so. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, my number five is uh, acronyms. I think you can buy a game called Yacronyms and you earn yaks. Uh, you don't really need it. You just need uh, three or four or even five. Um, alphabetical dice, uh, you can get those pretty cheap. Some of them even have, have like wilds on it. And you just roll a die, you put them in order. And I have a B, X, uh, K, A. And uh, they come up with something that starts with B, X, K, A. And it might not make any sense whatsoever, uh, but they're looking for words that all start with those letters and they're making their own acronym for it. And uh, I think I've we use this for like a snack type game. So we're eating a meal and they're at a table. So the tables are groups trying to come up and we write them up on the board. And um, I, I think I've laughed the most playing this game with my youth group. So yeah, acronyms. Yeah, and what's funny there is no matter what, it's just the structure for whatever they mm -hmm. come up with. Really fun. Okay. Number four uh, for me, um, I, I got this at a youth leaders retreat and I uh, saw it play and said, okay, I've got to, I've got to have it. And then, uh, and then I have every expansion, everything that they made. <laughs> well, except for one, I, I understand I don't have one right now, uh, uh, but uh, that's super fight. And uh, <laughs> super fight is just a, uh, basically you get three cards. Um, uh, so you get three of these cards and it's three characters. You pick the one you want, then you get three more cards and they are kind of abilities that this character has. And so, you, and then there's just one off the top of the deck that you have to play. So your character has two other characteristics with it. And in Super Fight, uh, you are fighting another another character, somebody else that uh, has a character plus two abilities. What's fun for this one on uh, to me is that uh, you can you can do the fight all different ways. So sometimes I'll take somebody on in the youth group. Sometimes it's two on two and we're fighting the same character. You know, but two or three of us are thinking for the same character. The audience can be determined the the winner uh, of of this one. There's another game called Versus that is like that. You know, it's uh, the, ver this person versus that one. But Super Fight. Uh, some of the expansion decks uh, have things like where you're fighting. And it's not just a fight, but it's actually a, a game of ping pong. Um, so it kind of <laughs> changes everything up on you. Um, but I like this one. Um, this one, probably for junior hires, uh, they love the, the debate uh, that happens uh, from Super Fight. So. Like it. I enjoy that one. It's a yeah. fun one. 
Thanks, Rosemary, for telling us yes. about that one. <laughs> she is the one. <laughs> she is the one that got us going on that. My, my real regret was going to um, a Goodwill and a guy had it in his hand and he had just picked up a super oh. fight box. And I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I missed that. The, the core box, yeah. you know. You're I, like... I'm still looking for <laughs> super fight at a Goodwill. <laughs> Speed coding for me, um, we talked about that. Uh, but That's again, our second one, right? the, mm -hmm. the ability to use it um, in a number of different places and how quick it comes out of my backpack. We'll have to put the uh, put the uh, a place where you can get that a link to where you can get the score sheet because sure. I think we have it online. Mm -hmm. uh, but the speed cootie, uh, then, then you just print that and you can play it. Um, uh, we've also made up our own cootie. Yeah, like, that's absolutely. fun too. So, okay. My number four is uh, wits and wagers. Um, so uh, it's a really it's it's really fun to see how bad guessers are in your youth group. Uh, so it just starts with a question. The person that has the answer writes down the answer, and then everybody gives uh, what they think that would be. So, uh, how old was um, Abraham Lincoln when he died? Uh, and you know, oh, 53 and uh, 72, uh, and you just get guesses, uh, or some people actually know the answer. Uh, and if they get the answer correct, they would get um, extra points uh, and things like that. But really, you reveal all the answers, and then uh, so if it was us three playing. We would each have three different um, answers out there. One would be the right answer. And if I guess the right answer, I get points. But then if somebody guesses my answer, uh, I get points. So they were wrong, but they guessed my answer. I was close enough. So it has all sorts of different things. How many, uh, how many moons are around Jupiter or um, how many... How many popsicles fit in a you know in a garbage truck? Uh, dimples on a golf ball. Yeah, yeah dimples yeah. on a golf ball. And so it's just a, it's a very much a number game, but it's a guessing game, and you're just trying to get close uh, for it. So enjoy this one. And I like that better than Balderdash, where you have yeah. to come up with so much like this. You yeah. just have to come I brought, up. With I brought my copy. Oh, uh, look at uh, you! Uh, so nothing huge, <laughs> but that's what it looks like. And I, I think people. Yeah. I know I enjoy it. Yeah. So. Very nice. Find that one a Goodwill. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the right Goodwill. Right. Uh, yeah. right Not every right. town has good Goodwill. <laughs> That's true. You know, so. But every Goodwill has Trivial Pursuit. <laughs> no, that is, that's true. Leave that one right on the rack. Uh, on to top three, uh, and we have only had two uh, that we have uh, been uh, identical on. Uh, this one is, uh, for me, a little bit like uh, your uh, signs, uh, that pass-off. Uh, we called it electricity uh, years ago, back in the 80s. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, electricity, though, was just everybody was holding hands on one side uh, in a big circle, person in the middle. Uh, so I would say, I'm sending a message to, and it can be right next to me, it could be that person, and the person in the middle has to see the squeeze. So it would be the squeeze that once you felt the squeeze, you would send it on, uh, make its way. So it's kind of like the wave, you know, at the stadium where when that person's looking that way, all of a sudden you see this squeeze, 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 and then that person has got it. And uh, then they send it. And so sometimes you're sending that, like, that thing really fast. And sometimes that guy's right on, like he knows it's right there and he's waiting, you know, so you're just barely squeezing uh, to try to get it. And then if he catches you, then that guy's in the middle and... How do you on. how do you know who how do they know who you're sending it to? So you just tell them. So uh, so the person who was in the center, they found uh, the uh, the person. They now get back in the circle, and so they will say, "I'm sending a message to the cameraman," and uh, and so uh, that would squeeze, and then you would squeeze the next one, and as soon as he felt the squeeze from either side, he would be like, "Got it," and then he would send it to somebody else, and so. Uh, but Same. you know it's coming, but it can go either way. Yep, can go either way. And the moment that person turns, probably the funny parts on this one is the moment that person turns away, you'll just see massive squeezes. You'll be like, <laughs> you know, and you'll turn around real fast, you know, trying to uh, catch it. But if he catches it, the person who was squeezing is now the person in the center. So. Yeah, maybe, we played it a bunch. Maybe not a game for COVID. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it worked in the 80s, though. <laughs> Cow time relay worked right. in the 80s, too. We don't need that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number three for you, Scott. For me, code names is just um, when it comes to group games, talking about, um, you know, uh, where you put the cards out there and people are trying to um, share that with their group and they're guessing. What I like about it, it goes it goes small or big, 
you you again you can do it with five people and um and and the amazing way that you can stack and you can say just a word you know and and your buddy gets it you know mm -hmm. five and then you give a word and so you're trying to the, the the key to it is is with your clue you're trying to get a number of things and that's the only way you're going to win the game is if you can stack one time that's the easy one to give a clue to but a five would be like Oof. yeah and, and this game plays fun because it can be played simple where you really try to get like you were saying you're trying to get several out so that the guy who's really into it enjoys it and the guy who's not much into it he enjoys it too so. yeah my number three uh is really bad art um it's in essence you have five seconds to know what you're drawing and drawing it uh so even five seconds five five what? seconds <laughs> and then they have to they they have to guess uh what what it was and so it evens the playing field on um on artistic ability uh it actually puts the people who um like drawing enjoy drawing or are good at drawing uh, it puts them actually under because they want to spend the time <laughs> to you know draw an actual pigtail on something but really i like pig i I just need, I've got so few seconds to actually read what I'm drawing, process, and then just scribble it on a piece of paper to see what, what happens. You'll get some drawings that you're like, what? <laughs> I don't, that's nothing. Uh, I, an amoeba. Uh, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what that looks like. And so it's, uh, it evens, uh, evens the playing field, has fun memories because somebody randomly guessed or understood what you were drawing uh, and it, it's just really quick games there's a scoring system and things like that but eh, we just like laughing at people's pictures so really bad art i think the fun part on some of these type of games is if you have some kind of gallery you know some kind of place <laughs> that you can post things up because uh, a whole bunch of pictures of all that really bad art and you, you got some good stuff uh, right there Number two, uh, number two uh, for me. Uh, this is one of those speed games that I never win. Uh, may fit in the dice uh, chucking uh, contest uh, <laughs> part, but it's one to fifty, uh, and I'm surprised it's not on anybody's list. But one to fifty for me is just uh, it's a dice and a pen, and everybody has a piece of paper. I roll the die. You pick the number. Let's say it's number one. Uh, if I roll a one, then I can start writing uh, with that pen. Uh, one to fifty. One, two, three for as fast as I can. The next person, they roll the die. If it's a two, three, two through six, they can do nothing. It rolls around as fast as they can. The next person who rolls a one steals my pen and starts writing one to 50 as fast as they can. And so it's this speed thing that's going around. As soon as I, the pen was stolen from me, uh, as soon as somebody gets to 50, they yell out 50 and uh, game over. So this one's where you don't roll a one for several times. And you're like, no, this guy's going to get it. What? No. Uh, and then you'll get people like at 46, you know, yeah. and they're, and, and then we have at the end, you've got to be able to legibly read, uh, you know, that's like the, the test. Like if that's a winning card is that I actually have to see every number. And if they don't, we keep on going. That person's out. So uh, <laughs> this one is a fun. And if you get much over, say, six or seven, uh, you just need two pins, two dice, and the same thing. It's just wrapping its way around. Um, we played that as a circle game, and we just put a like a stool, and everybody has a clipboard, or they have a piece of paper. So when they roll it, they run in, and the pen stays in the, oh, uh, stays in in the, the middle. And so you push the person away or rip it out of their hand, and then you're at the stool writing. And so it gives... Uh, so if it's been eight people, I don't have like, yeah, I yeah. actually have to run in who has that pen instead. It's just the middle. I have it push you out of the way from that stool and just keep going. I really do enjoy that game though. Yeah. The, the pen interactions flying all over grabbing. <laughs> and uh, I like it when there's a couple of pins in a circle because you're picking, oh, they're closer. You're picking so closer. I'm going to grab this mm -hmm. one. Yeah. To, to not, not because they're closer to you. They're closer yeah. to winning. Closer to winning. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And everybody's saying, you got to get his pin. He's 32, 33, 34, get it. You know, you know so it's the, the play by play is really, yes. really fun. So, Scott, what do you got? Number two. For me, um, this was really unique to our youth group because we did Bible Memory Challenge. And one of the things that we did in our youth group is a number of our kids were part of scripture scholarship. So, we would, to earn camp, we would memorize books of the Bible. And so, when you have that, all of a sudden, we just memorize James, and so somebody's like James one one, and then James one two, and James, and you just get a run going, and it really is a challenge. It's an elimination game 
You have to have the verse and the reference and say it. And, and we would go 30, 40 minutes um, before we, we'd run out. But at certain points, we were like, okay, now you don't have to have the reference, but you still have to have the verse right. And so that was in a van, in a bus. And because of the, the time we spent with Bible memory, this was our review system, but it was always a favorite. It was always something like, hey, what are we playing Bible memory challenge? Yeah, that was like a culture for your youth group, the culture of Bible memory, which is part of your fundraising for camp and all yes. that, right? Yes. Yeah. We'd send 33 kids to camp because they memorized the book of the Bible. Yeah, the, the church really got behind that whole uh, concept. That's really cool. Uh, my number two is Picturica. Uh, it is a, a card game, pretty simple card game, and you just yell Picturica when uh, you have something on your card that would match a statement that would that was said by a youth leader. So uh, things found in a kitchen. Uh, and I, I'm just scouring through the cards that I have to see if uh, to see if I have something that could be classified as found in a kitchen. Uh, and, uh, oh, I have water. Maybe I can convince them that water is found in a kitchen. And so you have gracious uh, youth leaders. They're like, oh yeah, that, that makes sense, whatever. And they have other people, no, that's, that's fish tank water. That's, that doesn't belong in a kitchen. <laughs> and so we do a variety of uh, different punishments. Like if you do uh, end up uh, not getting it, here's two extra cards. Or, oh, you can't look at your cards for two rounds. And so they're trying to remember, oh, I know I had something that had the next statement. And we enjoy the odd statements that we can make. So it comes with a, with a whole series, a whole deck of cards on um, things that are cold, things that are hot, things that are hairy, things that are cute, things that are uh, sweaty, things that like just a, a variety of different things. And we just like making up our own uh, to see what, what could be found. Hmm. Uh, it, that's it. a game you can buy? It's a game that you okay. can buy. Picturica. Picturica. Hmm. And the best part is they have to yell Picturica in order to be, uh, to be heard. So I have a youth group mostly of girls right now. And so there's just this high pitch <laughs> scream of Picturica. And uh, that's almost that's almost more fun. It's just for them to just yell picture you guys as loud as they can. I have it in my closet. Never played it. Oh, so, 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 so we pair it. we Top pair around games yelling, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yelling, yeah, yeah. yelling, games. excitableness. Uh, so <laughs> we pair them up, and, and nobody's ever by themselves. So it's either two or three people, uh, and we'll have I don't know fifteen groups at times, and yeah. they're just having a great time, trying to get rid of their cards. That's a fun part on uh, several of these games that you would buy now that are, you know, players two to six, you know, players. Really, you can do pairs and go now four to 12, really easy mm -hmm. uh, to do that. My number one, here we are, number one. My number one is uh, heads or tails. And uh, uh, so here's the way this game uh, works for us. Uh, yeah, it's a flip of a quarter. And uh, so I divide the group up into two uh, teams and they're both kind of sitting uh, facing uh, each other. And uh, then we say, uh, heads you squeeze and tails you don't. And we flip a coin right where the two people that are right there are able to see. Everybody else has to be looking down at the other, mm. at the other end. So these two people are looking to see heads or tails. The moment they see heads, they're going to squeeze. Again, not COVID-19. Not uh, COVID-19. <laughs> uh, but the moment they, uh, they see that heads, they squeeze. And it is just do 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 And then you're picking up something at the end. Now, um, depending on what you want to put at the end, that is everything from a bandana. You are very kind uh, to an orange, which is okay. Banana? But a banana gets yeah gets really <laughs> uh, gets really interesting uh, by uh, by the end of the game. Uh, this is a game that every now and then people try to um, uh, try to cheat at. You know they will try to. Uh, but then so what happens is you squeeze. Uh, so you squeeze whichever team wins. The person who is at the end comes back up to the front, and now you have two different people going against each other. So every now and then you're trying to get off of somebody that's just not a fast uh, squeezer and you're, you try to just, you're going to go with the 50-50 chance, you know, that you, that you get through it. Um, yes, and squeeze uh, before, before it even happens. Eyes so. closed is a pretty important deal. So until, uh, so for us, I'd have a person at the end looking to see if it, anything was squeezed. Yeah, to and then would just grab. So eyes closed until you're squeezed. Uh, it ended up being a rule. A rule that you guys yeah. added. Uh, Good luck, cheaters. Huh? <laughs> ah, in innovators. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, heads or tails. It was a comeback to game uh, all the time. Probably a once every six weeks um, uh, play. It so easy uh, to set up. Played with any number. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, you needed eight or more probably, um, but it was a, it was a fun one. 
We did too. That was a, it just, oh, we can do that. Today. Yeah, yeah, really, <laughs> really simple. For me, um, handball was, um, it probably is a little bit better, closer to 12, you know, and, and more. Um, we really liked handball um, in our youth group. Uh, and you can play it in a gym, but not in a gym. You can play it, you can create um, the different things. So really, um, and what I like to say is when I teach it, I'd say it's an Olympic sport. Small ball, okay. you, can, you can dribble, take a step, pass it, and going into a goal. You could set limits up to limit where they'd have to throw from and, okay. and things like so that. So a little but bit like ultimate frisbee, but like they soccer. set it up. Very yeah, much like up. that. Okay, but good. the ball is coming fast, and and you really want the you want the official handball because yeah. it just really makes it better. Mm -hmm. so we got to the point where this was tradition in our in our winter retreats, and winter retreat you started with handball was something that would happen somewhere every winter retreat. That's cool. Okay, what do you got? Number one. Number one. Um, you, you have object uh, for everything. I did, well, not everything. <laughs> happy good. Salmon. Yeah. If you've never played Happy <laughs> Salmon. Oh, so this uh, so there's a blue and a green fish. And you can play it up to 12 with both fish. Um, and uh, it is, it's pit and signs kind of mixed. So you have a deck of, I think, 10 or 12 cards. And uh, so it's uh, um, a fist bump, a high five. Um, a switcheroo, which is you're switching places with somebody around the table, and then something called a happy salmon, which is uh, a unique handshake. You stick your hand out, they stick their hand out, and you uh, do like the... <laughs> the happy salmon. The happy salmon. Uh, and so the first person to get rid of all of their cards, uh, uh, they yell happy salmon, and they grab the fish bag that's in the middle of the table. Um, I have had some of my quietest girls in youth group um, Scream, yell, uh, be the most, uh, have the most volume in the game, and having just a blast. So I would have when I first introduced it to my youth group, they would have, I would have had I don't know four girls. We'll just watch, and then we applied some healthy peer pressure for for them, and then they wouldn't not play, and they would be asking after church on a Sunday morning, "Did you bring Happy Salmon? We'd like to play in classroom one. Is that?" Did you did you bring it? Did did you bring it? And they would want me to bring it every week so they could just play. We have a ton of fun with this one. Uh, we, we've got a little too big to continue to play it unless we wanted to uh, do uh, multiple groups. Uh, but up to twelve people, and it's just it's a really loud game. So make sure it's a, away from somewhere that needs to be quiet. Youth leaders played this well too. I mean, <laughs> not just kids. Oh yeah. So happy salmon, uh, blue and green fish, and it's just an enjoyable game. Yeah, and this one's fun because uh, some some of what we have here uh, takes a really good like uh, physical ability. Some of it takes a really good mind, you know, able to talk and that sort of thing. This one just has that fun, active, but not. You don't have to be really good at anything to to enjoy playing it. Yeah, it's like a pointless game like Dutch Blitz. Just uh, <laughs> yeah. a 1980s game. Uh, 19, right yeah, it's so a new version. New version. Uh, of, of that. Any, as we close up here, we've got uh, 30 things, probably 25 of them uh, here on, on the list. Uh, anything that you guys would uh, bring out of these or, or, or that would help people uh, run a game, uh, that sort of thing. I would probably start off with just a, um, I, I found with a lot of these games, that, that when I first saw it, I didn't always know if it was going to work. Like, like you list some of these and you're like, now, how is that fun? Like, yeah. like how is that going to work? Yeah. But I really found when I mixed a little bit of structure, you know, a couple of rules, maybe a couple of points with people, they're the ones who made it fun. So I just had to be willing to just go ahead and try it. And, mm -hmm. and so I would say at least four or five of these. The first time I would have been introducing it, I would have been like... I don't know how this is going to go, you know. And, and then I, I was surprised. Um, it's probably not as much the game maybe as the group uh, that, that I had that really made the, the, game, the game fun. Well, and each group's a little bit different. What's mm -hmm. the favorite of one group doesn't fly yeah. in the other group. Mm -hmm. I think the practice round is an important thing. Here, here we're going to practice once. Let's let's just work through this. Yeah, one that way. lets everybody just kind of like it's not serious. It's not real. Oh, that's a new rule. It didn't mess me up. Yeah. Uh, with that, so. And you usually hear, "Oh, I get it now." Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I get it. Yeah. I, I like practice rounds that allow people to watch. So you you'll have a few kids in your youth, youth group that want to participate, and they're, they're fine doing the practice round and being the uh, this is what you don't do. Uh, but a number a number of kids are like I. 
I'll, I'll watch for 20 minutes before I jump in and play. So being okay with, hey, I'm just going to test this through quickly with three or four or uh, just with the youth leaders and we've all, we're all set to go on it. We know how to play and then have them ask questions and then just jump in it. Guys, we're just having fun. This doesn't, yeah. this doesn't yeah. actually mean uh, much besides we're having fun together, uh, making memories. So yeah. Substitution's always good. Hey, I need to get a drink. Would you take my place? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take my place? Yep. And then pairing people up to make one, I think, is still a good thing. If I have a, somebody who's really struggling, I'll say, okay, the two of you are acting as, as one. And they put you know mine together, and that's, that's a cool thing. They might not be quiet when they're talking to each other about what they're going to do. But that's all part of the fun. So I hope that one of these ideas uh, that you could add, and you may get a few of them. I know myself, I've already uh, been like, ooh, uh, I, need to, I need to add a couple things to my wish list. And, uh, <laughs> and I might try uh, a couple of these after, after hearing what the, what the guy said. So I hope this is a help to your youth group. How many did we repeat? Oh, just two. Just two. two. Thank you. I got it up. I almost did a celebration, but I wasn't <laughs> a little, sure I was A little right. happy dance. Yeah, I almost did.